Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to build another S Model 172nd scale kit. This time, as you can hopefully see, the French Hotchkiss H35 light tank, the early version. I was pretty impressed by their Panzer 3 kit that I built a while ago, so I figured why not get some more, and because I rarely do them, I chose a French tank. There is a 2013 and 2015 version of this kit. The bottom right corner of the box tells us that this is the 2015 one, which I can only assume is an improvement over the 2013 one. The back of the box is printed upside down relative to the rest of the box, but we can easily flip that over. It has information in three languages, one of which is English. I assume one is Chinese and the other I don't know. There isn't really a whole lot of information, but there is a basic painting guide, though I'm not really sure if they're referring to a specific brand of paints. I think they might just be generic colours. That's fine though. Inside the box you can see that everything is all packaged together in one bag so it all stays together. Everything except the instructions comes in its own individual bag as well, which seems like a bit too much packaging to me. I'm not really a fan of that. But I suppose it could be worse. You can make two tanks with this kit, so there are two identical sets of sprues. The first thing I noticed about these sprues was that there's a couple of big empty areas on one of them and it looks like something has been removed from these. I feel like I'm missing out on some extra stuff for my bits box. I suspect that there's parts for a later version of this tank that they decided not to include. Or maybe they're parts for a totally different kit that they just couldn't justify making an entirely new mould for. Obviously I don't know, but as long as all the parts for this particular kit are here, I don't think it's really anything to worry about. The important thing is that the sprues are quite neatly moulded and look very good. The mould lines are, as always, there, but they're not too bad at all, and they should be very easy to clean up. There wasn't any flashing and there doesn't seem to be any defects or anything like that. The details are pretty good, there are some nice fine parts like shovels and that pickaxe that look really nice. It's probably obvious that you'll need to be careful removing these from the sprues. I think the plastic in this kit looks really good. There aren't a lot of parts in this kit, so this is looking to be a fairly simple build. In addition to the plastic, there are some photo etch parts, as I'm led to believe all S model kits have. These are some very tiny bits. Unlike on the Panzer III, there are no grills, which I think are great uses for photo etch, but we'll see how these parts work later. We also have this set of decals. This seems like a pretty simple set of decals, but there is a good variety of markings here. I don't know how well these are going to work because I've never used them, but I'm sure they're fine. And of course there's an instruction booklet. This is very simple, mostly because there aren't a lot of parts, so a complex instruction set would be a bit over the top. What matters is they're clear and easy to follow. The back page is the same painting guide as the back of the box. Let's get to building. The instructions say to begin with the turret, so why not? I start by adding the commander's hatch. There is another one on the sprue, but the instructions say to use this dome one. I like it, I think it's interesting. It's very easy to install. There's no keying, but if you make sure the two little latch details are facing towards the rear of the turret, that should be fine. I add a bit of extra glue from the inside to make sure everything bonds nicely. I think it looks good. Time for what I am assuming are vision devices. The two little round bits should be positioned so that they're on the lower half of the part. These need to be inserted through the hole in the turret from the inside. I used my knife to press the part all the way in because I couldn't get my fingers in there. I'm pretty sure most people would have that issue. This time it's not just because my fingers are fat. Once the part is pressed into place I add glue. Then I install the turret rear hatch. This goes into place easily enough. You could probably model this open if you really wanted to, but there's not much internal detail so it might not look that great. This hatch needs to be installed before the floor part because of how the two halves of the loops the door would pivot on go together. There's one part on either turret half. I then install the gun. I glue this into the lower turret part. This is a stumpy little gun, though it does have a hole in the end of the barrel so I don't need to drill it out, which I really appreciate. It does have detail for a breach and such, so if you do want to model the tank with the hatch open, that might make it look a little bit better. Otherwise it's a bit redundant, I guess. Though nice to have anyway. Then it's time to join the two halves of the turret together. I add glue to the upper part of the gun mount even though it should stay in place with just the lower half glued. There are guide pins that make sure the turret goes together nice and neatly. I apply a bit of pressure to eliminate any gaps and the turret is done. This was super easy and I think it looks pretty good. Now it's time to work on the hull. 
I start this by joining the upper and lower hull parts together. This is made very easy by the guide pins. I add glue and a bit of pressure and the hull is together. You may need to expand the track mounting holes just a little bit. I did this with a round file. It didn't need too much of that though. If you do this, make sure the glue is properly bonded first, so that your file or whatever tool you choose to use doesn't pry the parts apart. I really like the Hotchkiss plate here. It's a nice little extra something that breaks up the front of the hull, and it looks nice and neat like the rest of the detailing. Then it's time to attach the tracks. This is pretty simple. There are guide pins to help you get the positioning right. Make sure that you place the parts with the idler wheels towards the rear of the tank, unless for some reason you want them to be backwards. I'm not here to judge, you do you. I apply a bit of pressure and the tracks are on. The idle wheel doesn't have anything to lock it into place, but I add a drop of glue where it contacts the hull to try and give it a bit of extra strength. I also add glue where the bogies contact the hull too. Very easy, very tracks. At this point I decided to add the photo etch parts. I start with this, I think it's a rear view mirror, though it may be something else. I do like that the mounting pole for this is raised a bit. It probably won't come as a surprise, but this is quite fiddly. It is a very tiny part, and I found it more tricky to get into place than I think it should be. Because these are metal, super glue is used to attach them. Plastic cement doesn't work on metal. The annoying thing is that there is no mounting hole for this. You have to sort of stand it in place and hope that it stays there. I do like this part, but I'm 99% sure this is going to get broken off and lost very easily. Let's see if it stays on the tank at least until the end of the build. Slightly less fiddly and annoying to attach is this tool of some kind. There's no guide for this, and it looks like it just goes onto the side of the hull here. To be honest, I think this part is something that should be round, not flat. But hey, it's here and it was much easier to get into place than the rear view mirror. Next I add some lift bracket things, whatever you might call them. I apologise for a lot of this being out of shot. I paid less attention to the camera the more fiddly and annoying this got. I use tweezers to hold these tiny parts and put some glue on them. Then they go onto the sides of the hull like so. I quickly nudge them into place with my knife before the glue can set. I also managed to have some spillage with the super glue, which is a bit annoying. I didn't film it, but there are also four brackets that go onto the lower hull at the front and rear. I only put them on the front though, because they were so annoying. Photo etch works really good for things like grills. Parts that just stand up off the model's surface by themselves, not so much. It would have been significantly more pleasant to do this if there were mounting slots and tabs for the photo etch parts to mount onto. I'm pretty sure these parts are going to be knocked off very easily if and when I paint this. You are supposed to add some tiny little shackles to those brackets, but I was absolutely not interested in doing that. I felt like it wasn't worth the headache, so I didn't bother putting them on. I did add the wire cutters though. These were about as easy to attach as the tool on the other side of the hull. You more or less just drop it into place. There's no guide for it, so it can pretty much go wherever you like. The instructions suggest it goes somewhere here. It was a little bit less fiddly to attach than some of the other parts, but I did still almost manage to glue it to the desk, so be careful. Then I go back to adding the plastic details like this exhaust system. This part is pretty thin and flimsy, so I do recommend being careful with it when removing it from the sprue and cleaning it up. There's a tiny nub on the side of the hole that this mounts onto. It's a bit fiddly, but not too hard to get into place. I nudge it with my knife and add a bit more glue and then nudge it until it looks like it's in the right position. You can see why this needed to go into place after the photo etch part. Next I add the spare road wheel. This has keying to help it properly mount into the centre of the hull. Nothing too tricky with this. There's also another spare road wheel without the mounting bracket that you could use as stowage if you wanted. I've clearly not added it to this tank. Then I add the pickaxe. This is a nice fine detail. Like a lot of the other parts, there is no guide for this, but the instructions show that it goes on here. I just sit this part where I want it and gently add glue. The glue seeps around the part and bonds it into place. There's a little tab on the handle of this tool and that should be on the lower side. I guess that's meant to be a mounting bracket or something. And finally, a shovel. This goes here somewhere. Again, there's no guide or mounting holes or anything like that. Also, it doesn't really seem to fit onto the hull here very well. I add some glue, nudge it a bit more, and then decide that's good enough. The turret locks into place with a tab locking mechanism similar to what you'll find on a lot of other model tanks. 
And with that, the S Model H35 light tank early version in 172nd scale is complete. I'm pretty happy with this tank and how it's turned out. It's a vehicle I didn't previously have in my collection and I do think French tanks are quite interesting looking. This model seems like a pretty decent representation. I mean, it's not super detailed or anything like that, but I'm pretty sure S model kits are intended for wargaming anyway, and it is in a fairly small scale, so you're not going to see every minute detail that the tank actually has in real life. It still looks pretty decent though, even though I've omitted some of the photo etch. For the most part, this build was fun and satisfying to do, except of course for some of that photo etch. At least in my opinion. I'm sure there are people who would really enjoy adding those parts, but I didn't. I feel like they're a bit more of a headache than they're worth. I feel like the photo etch on S Model's Panzer III was much better. Those were grills, and I think photo etch is perfect for those. On this model I spent way too much time messing about with it, and it kind of feels like it's been added just to have photo etch. It also feels like it's going to be very easy to knock some of those parts off. I think it would have been better if there were mounting slots for those parts that are meant to be standing up from the tank. That would at least give them some strength. Looking at the pickaxe and shovel, I think the photo etch tools would have actually looked much better in plastic. Those parts shouldn't really be flat. I guess at this scale the roundness probably wouldn't be super obvious anyway, but still, they managed to do some really nice details in plastic and I would like to have seen more of that. I think I might be complaining a bit too much about what was really a small detail, both literally and figuratively. You don't have to put the photo etch parts on, the tank will still look good. It was very quick and easy to put this together. I only built one of the tanks that comes in the box, but I don't see why you couldn't get them both done in an afternoon, perhaps while watching one of my other videos. Go on, you know you want to. The result is a nice model of what I think is a very interesting little tank. I find those odd looking bogies especially interesting. Also, when I say little tank, I really mean little. If you look at pictures of it with people involved, it looks kind of like a toy. It's kind of adorable in how tiny it is, and I believe it only had a crew of two. If French tanks aren't your thing, S Model also makes a version of this tank as captured by the Germans. I'm not sure exactly how much the Germans modified this vehicle, but that might be what the parts that were removed from the sprue leaving those big gaps were for. I don't plan to get that kit right away, but it might be worth looking at. Either way, I like this tank. What do you think? Do you have a place for a tank like this in your 172nd scale French force? Does it fill you with terror seeing an H35 on your opponent's side of the table? I bet it does. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And if you haven't already, why not sub here on YouTube, join our glorious community on Discord, follow me on social media, or watch me stream on Twitch. And if you really like what I do, please consider supporting over on Patreon, or perhaps by purchasing a shirt or a mug or a sticker from my merch store. Links to all of those things are in the description below. And as always, I shall return soon. So until then, be excellent to each other and thanks for watching. Farewell.